And then, Snoozer is flying to space in a rocket ship. Snoozer is flying very fast. Inaccurate. This shuttle does not meet industry standards. Furthermore, Snoozer is wearing no protective garments. This would certainly result in a swift demise. Son, you silly goose! Snoozer does have an astronaut suit on. But you know what? What? It is invisible! Inaccurate. No such suit exists. And it is highly unlikely such a suit would ever exist, as it would serve little practical purpose. Anyway, Snoozer and Snoozer's invisible suit land on a planet. It is very quiet. In X. I said it was very quiet. But the ground is made out of clay, and it can turn into anything. But then, a giant alien forms out of the ground. Snoozer says, hello, alien clay. I am Snoozer. And the alien clay says, are you a baby alien? Where are your parents? Then I will adopt you. Let's go back to Earth. They have cookies there. So Snoozer and the alien clay go back to Earth. And they eat cookies. Why was Zot excluded from the story? Because the alien would be very afraid of Zot. Aliens aren't used to seeing robots. You are a robot. Well, I guess so. But I don't really look like a robot. I look like an owl. But I also look like an elephant. Plus, I have fuzz crystals inside of me. Zot could eat cookies. Okay, Zot is eating cookies with Snoozer in the alien play. The end. Satisfactory. Hey, where's Checkers? Snoozer, Zot? Where were you? I was off looking for fuzz crystals. I found a nice little blue one. I'm going to use this to power that new suit idea, Snoozer. Checkers, I want to go somewhere to learn about space. And the moon and the stars and stuff. Interesting idea, Snoozer. And we actually have to send a new lesson over to the Fuzzleland School. So that might be just perfect. All right, guys, let's get ready. We are off on another reading road trip. Recording. Uh-oh! I almost forgot! Recording! Sounds good. Sending in three, two, one. And we are off. Auto pilot activated. So, where are we going today? Well, today, Snoozer, we are going somewhere very important, crucially important, but I just can't tell you what it is. Oh, come on! All right, I'll tell you what. I'll give you three hints, and let's see if you can guess what it is. Are you ready? Yes, I am! Hint number one. It is very large. Hint number two. It's indoor. And hint number three. We've been there before on a different reading road trip about extinct animals. Hmm, the museum? That's exactly where we're going, Snoozer. We're going to a museum to learn all about space. Space? I love learning about space. Oh, absolutely, Snoozer. We've gone to space with you going off into the moon. We've read books about space. We've wrote our own books about space. And now we're finally going to learn all about it. That space, stars, the moon, how the moon causes tides, everything. Oh, boy. I can hardly wait. Let me pull up the map and talk all about it. 
Woods. We are going to Rainbow Way, and once we cross through that rainbow, we'll be right at our destination, the Buffalo Museum of Science. Along the way, we're going to stop with Mrs. Hamilton and make a very special space-themed craft. Checkers! I see the books coming! Let's check out a few. Here you go, snoozer. Stickman's Guide to Earth, Uncovered. From the Edge of Space to the Ocean Depths by Catherine Chambers. And Follow the Moon Home by Philippe Cousteau and Deborah Hopkinson. Well, snoozer, those sound absolutely fascinating. Would you like to take a closer look? Mm-hmm. All right, snoozer. Entering in three, two, one. Here we are in Stickman's Guide to Planet Earth. Looks like we're going to be traveling from the edge of Earth's atmosphere to 36,000 feet below its surface in this book. Well, that's a long trip. Do we have time for that? I'd assume this book will abbreviate the time such a trip takes. Let's get started. The book starts by giving us the different layers of gases that makes up the Earth's atmosphere. The exosphere, the thermosphere, the mesosphere, the stratosphere, and the troposphere. Yippee! And here are the things we can expect to occupy each layer. As you can see, the exosphere is the farthest away from the Earth's surface, 375 miles away. Do you think I can jump that high? No. Aw, oh, man! And then the book goes deeper into each layer and gives more details. Here is the International Space Station up in the thermosphere. This is when the book teaches us more about astronauts and space shuttles. Great! This is my jam! And there is the Hubble Telescope, which is a telescope that allows us to see deep into our galaxy. Whoa! It is so big! And it's in space! I want one of those! That's about $16 billion of machinery. Ah! Is that a lot? But this isn't just a book about space. We travel down to Earth, learn about clouds, weather, and the water cycle. And then there is all this info about the tools we use to measure weather. All incredibly interesting. It's a twister! It's a twister! Mountains and valleys! Coolio! Snow and snowy mountains! This book has everything! Close. A great number of environments from forests to canyons to mines deep into the ocean, including the layers of the ocean, just like we learned about with the atmosphere. So we get started up in space, and now we're down in the ocean's trenches. What a great introduction to the Earth and its atmosphere. I can't wait to go back and to read every nook and cranny of this book. I am overwhelmed. There's so much happening in this book. Yes. But we have to head over to book two now. Let's go. Follow the moon home. Hmm, what is this book about? It's all about a girl named Vivian who recently moved to a new place. While playing at the beach, she learns that there is a sea turtle nest nearby. But the sea turtles are at great risk of perishing. They will die? Why? Sea turtles by nature will hatch and then follow the strongest light source, which naturally comes from the moonlight, leading them into the sea, their home. But because there are beach houses along the shore, the turtles have been following that light and going the wrong way. Oh no! The poor turtles! What are they going to do? Well, Vivian gets together with some friends and they create a plan to alert the public of the situation and hope to get the homeowners to turn their lights off when the sea turtles' eggs hatch. They travel door to door, they alert the local news, and they speak publicly about sea turtles and what they need to survive. And over time, they start to build traction and gain a lot of attention. 
And at the end of the story, we will find out if their hard work paid off. I hope so. I want to see the turtles make it to the sea. We won't show the ending now, but this book is all about activism and making a difference in the community. I didn't know the moon was so important for sea turtles. That is illuminating. Let's go. Yeah, I love going inside of books and reading and exploring, but there's nothing quite like going to an actual museum and getting to experience it. But we're not quite ready to do that. Before that, we have to go to Mrs. Hamilton's class to do your craft. Hi, boys and girls. Would you like to do the Mrs. Hamilton craft just like me? Guess what? You can. Head to your local library. For all the materials that we use in the craft, plus we have activity sheets, games, and a whole lot more. Your library might even have their very own snoozer. Come and see me. Anyway, back to the show. Are we there yet? Yes. See ya. <laughs> So you came in like a shooting star. That's great because we are talking about stars in space today. I know, and I thought we could make ourselves our very own shooting star. Wowie! What a coincidence! All right. Well, what do you think? Should we start cutting out our pieces? Absolutely. Just about set. So, looks like we're gonna need a black marker or a crayon for a nice smile. All right, so I'm gonna deal with the face first and then we'll put the shooting star pieces on him. What do you think? That is beautiful! My star is angry! Angry? Why? Because he did not get enough sleep last night. Oh my goodness. Well, maybe he'll be feeling better tomorrow. We all feel different ways all the time. Well, thank you, Mrs. Hamilton. I had a lot of fun. I did too. So I look forward to seeing you next time, snoozer. Goodbye! Bye. And then I made my star angry because he is tired. Well, that's great, but I'm sorry to interrupt you, snoozer. We have some very important news. Breaking news: we have just arrived at the rainbow. How did I not see it? Woohoo! All right, brace yourself, snoozer. Going through the rainbow. Oh, we have just arrived at the Buffalo Museum of Science. Are you ready to go inside? We're finally here! This is going to be epic! Well, let's go off and explore space. Oh yeah, the Science Museum. I love coming to this place. Wow, this is a pretty sight. Yes, snoozer, right ahead there is the moon. But this exhibit imagines what would happen if we looked into the night sky and we replaced the moon with another planet. So let's move through all of the eight planets. Mercury.
and Venus, Earth, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune, and no Pluto. It's not a planet anymore. Snooze your luck. Destination Mars. This is a place so we can pretend we're actually on Mars. Ah, oh, that's a great idea. Let's go. Seatbelts. Silly checkers. I am the pilot. Let me start. All right, you do it. Seatbelts. Check. Backpack. Check, check. Ascending in three, two, one. Yippee! We're leaving Earth. Now we're landing on Mars. This is taking a long time. Checkers, I think we're there. Look out the window. The eagle has landed. This is great. We're collecting rocks for Mars. Wow. I can't wait to show these to my friends when we get back to Earth. All right, Snoozer, this is the orbit exhibit. We're gonna study this by dropping these balls into this gravity well. We've talked about how Earth and all other planets in our solar system revolve around the sun. And now we're gonna see what happens when we drop different sized balls into the gravity well. Which one's gonna last longer? How far is it gonna go? And how long is it gonna to take to go inside the gravity well? I'm gonna give you the orange one, are you ready? All right. Well, Snoozer, this exhibit is Rocket Lab. We get to build our own rockets with paper, pencils, scissors, crayons, put it all together, and then we get to test it out. Are you ready to go? Oh, of course I am. Where to, Snoozer? The moon? Or Mars? I want to go to Mars! Alright. Maiden voyage. We made it! Bullseye. Zot the robot at your service. Today's book recommendations are Ocean Tides and Tsunamis, Nature Book for Kids by Baby Professor, Sun and Moon Together by Ethan Long, Stars by Mary Lynn Ray, My First Book About Our Amazing Earth by Patricia J. Wynn, Stickman's Guide to Earth from the Edge of Space to the Ocean Depths by Catherine Chambers. Follow the Moon Home by Philippe Cousteau. That's all for now. Goodbye. Well, Snoozer, how did you enjoy learning about space? Oh, it was great. I love pretending that I am on Mars, but I really want to go to Mars. Can we go to Mars tomorrow? No, you've got that doctor's appointment. Oh yeah! I'm seeing Dr. Dan tomorrow. Silly snoozer. Maybe we can go the next day. Perhaps, snoozer. Well, we've learned a little bit about stars in space, but there is still so much more to learn. And one day, maybe we'll learn a whole lot more. But now we've got to get this file over to the Fuzzleland School. And as this day draws to a close, Certainly happy we learned about space today. All right, snoozer. Until next time. <laughs>